The arts are often credited with the power to change lives, especially young lives. We'll meet the director of the American Dance Festival, one of the founders of Walltown Children's Theater, and a student in the arts to find out how they're changing lives through the art of movement, next on Black Issues Forum. Quality public television is made possible through the financial contributions of viewers like you, who invite you to join them in supporting UNC-TV. Hi, welcome to Black Issues Forum. I'm Deborah Holt Noel. How often have we heard the virtues of the arts extolled? Arts have been incorporated into curriculums and communities to do everything from improve academic performance to build economies. Well, here in North Carolina, there are hundreds of schools, programs, and individuals working to make the arts even more accessible. And today, we'll meet the head of an organization that's doing this work on a statewide level and an individual who's making a difference in her community as well. But first, producer Erica Stark brings us this story about the life-changing impact of dance on the Haitian-born founder of a dance company in Durham and how he is in turn finding ways to use this art form to touch others. My name is Gaspar Louis. I am the founder and artistic director of Gaspar and Dancers. I was born and raised in Haiti, and I moved to the U.S. when I was about 13. I went to Montclair State University, where I took my first dance class, and I switched my major from business to dance. After graduation, Gaspard received multiple dance scholarships before joining the New York dance company, Palabalus. It is very well uh, known throughout the globe, and they work mostly with uh, shape, balance, counterbalance technique, a lot of partnering is involved in the, uh, with the Palabalos. After a successful 10-year run with the New York Dance Company, Gaspard and his wife decided to relocate their family to Durham, North Carolina. We have a little four-year-old and we wanted to uh, find a place that's a little bit more calm than being in Manhattan. And we thought, well, since we've been coming to North Carolina every year, for the American Dance Festival, or ADF, uh, I think it would be a good place to actually test the waters. Three years later, we're here. My wife is now the head of the American Dance Festival, so I teach creative movement throughout Durham um, for, the, uh, for most of the kids who wouldn't otherwise have the opportunity to take dance class. Tell me how um, Gaspard and Dancers came to be. I started Gaspar and Dancers in 2009, and it mostly came to me because of the fact that I was teaching those kids creative movement. And I figured, well, why not do something even bigger and start a dance company? We have one big annual performance every year since its inception uh, here at Duke University at Reynolds Industry Theater. Gaspard is currently working on his master's degree in dance, and as a part of his thesis, he had the opportunity to meet 90-year-old Haitian dance legend Jean-Léon Destiné. The experience inspired his newest work. Suke, which means to shake in Creole, uh, came from actually uh, the earthquake that took place in Haiti. Um, I've always wanted to choreograph something, but I've, I've always been a little bit uneasy about it because I wanted to make sure that I do a good job and, and I didn't want to, and I wanted to do it justice. And uh, you know, I wasn't sure how the right approach to come about it until I did an interview with Jean-Léon Destiné. He's uh, uh, used to be a real famous Haitian choreographer, dancer back in the 40s. And through my interview with him, I found the courage and the strength to say, to actually come up and do suke. Since moving to North Carolina, Gaspard has spent countless hours in rehearsal studios like this one, creating his signature style. Although some of his work does tell a specific story, 
he prefers the audience to determine their own meaning behind each dance. When somebody comes to see the piece, you may see something else. But as far as I'm concerned, what prompt the movements, the choreography actually stem from the earth moving underneath you, people being pulled from under the rubble, the chaos, people running around trying to find a safe place. You will see a lot of these elements in Suke. And you can learn more about Gaspard and Dancers online at gaspardanddancers.org. Right now, I'd like to introduce today's guest, Jody Nimmerichter, the director of the American Dance Festival. We also have Cynthia Penn, co-founder, artistic director, and executive director of the Walltown Children's Theater in Durham, and Andrew Manning, a second-year student at the University of North Carolina School of the Arts. So nice to have all three of you here with us today. Jody. I want to start with you. Um, of course, uh, a lot of people may be familiar with the American Dance Festival ADF, but talk about some of those outreach programs that are for the community. Well, we're really fortunate because we have the wonderful skill of Gaspar Louis, who is a former Palabalist dancer, but very used to working with creative movement. And he is our year-round uh, person overseeing and organizing classes throughout the entire community. And what we're able to do is offer free classes. We collaborate with all kinds of organizations, including public schools, charter schools, the park and recreation centers. And Gasper will organize either a one-time master class or a series of workshops. And he will go to the different locations. So we're taking the dance to the students who might not otherwise ever have the opportunity to come and take classes at a studio. So we're really trying to provide exposure, personal dancing experience, and ways of sparking individual creativity within youth um, through these classes. Terrific. And Cynthia, tell me, uh, how did Walltown Children's Theater come about? Walltown Children's Theater came about um, just with the dream that I had. Um, at the time, uh, similar to Jody's story, we both had young children and we wanted to go into a different transition in our lives. Um, in the year 2000, um, I looked around and saw that I was reaching very few children of color. Um, I was being contracted to teach in private schools and um, I thought that I was actually part of the problem. Um, I was not reaching children and really going into communities that um, did not necessarily have uh, the budget to have the arts as a, a means of education. So um, w I created and uh, started the Walltown Children's Theater, which is a nonprofit, and we really um, try to develop the children as a whole in the arts. We um, provide music and dance and acting classes for them. That is wonderful. And how long has Walltown been around? Um, well, once again, uh, since the year 2000, um, but really um, thriving, I would say 2003 um, is when we really started uh, making the community aware of the work th that we were doing and, and how important it is in a child's life. So. That's wonderful. Yeah. Now, Andrew, tell us a little bit about how dance was introduced to you or how you were introduced to dance. Well, um, it all started in third grade where um, Manhattan City Ballet came to um, my elementary school and like did a little internship kind of thing and workshop and was looking for kids to do like a little three months program with them and we auditioned and just danced and I didn't have any idea what was going on but I tried out and I auditioned and then I told my mom the, right, the same day that they were, I was going to get a letter from them that I'm going to be a part of like their school and sure enough a few weeks later I was accepted into like their like fall semester system and every day at 12 o'clock I would have a bus come pick me up from elementary school and it would drive me to Manhattan and I will take class with them and just really enjoy it and just really had a good time and it would drop me off at 2 o'clock every day um, and then after a while they did accept me into their school for all year round but I unfortunately didn't accept their offer and I just stayed in regular elementary school. So that's when dance really started for me. 
Wonderful. Now, Cynthia, I know that um, there are, as you mentioned, there are a number of different kinds of classes that are taught at Walltown, and we actually were able to visit the Walltown Children's Theater in Durham to give you an inside look. Tell us about uh, some of the classes as we uh, take a look inside with some of the video. Sure. Um, Walltown is unique because it's very diverse. Um, we have classes in tap, and um, and honestly, uh, the younger children get probably a very complete experience in that they begin with the ballet, the tap, and then they transition as they get older to things that are a little more technical. Um, we also are very fortunate to have um, a professor that from Duke that volunteers to teach capoeira classes, and that's a Brazilian martial art that the children love and it's very um, difficult to pique the interest of a young child in something that is foreign to them. And uh, they learn words in Portuguese, they have an experience of learning about a country that's different from their own. It's been highly successful. Um, and we also do ballet classes, lyrical dance, um, the acting is now beginning to thrive and so hip-hop is the one thing that I think a lot of the especially the teens love to do but um, we really encourage them to try everything very good well that looks like a lot of fun it is a lot of fun <laughs> <laughs> and, and age groups I mean you can introduce dance to a child from as early as what age I think the youngest has been two and a half <laughs> okay. um, at our school. Um, you know, I know there are classes for 18-month-olds, but um, I, that's a little ambitious. I always let the child, uh, you know, sort of decide at that young age whether they want to really pursue something like that because it is a structured environment and not all children are ready at a young age. Well, let's talk about uh, the benefit of, of arts and particularly uh, dance, Jody, in a young person's life and, and even in your own life. Now, how can it be a, be a benefit to someone um, even if they're not artistically or, or musically inclined? How can it really be a benefit? Well, I think it, it can spark ways to imagine and I think everyone is creative in uh, some aspect of their life and through wonderful exercises that Gasper may do, for example, it's how to bring out and how to express oneself. And each person has a beautiful way of doing that, but don't always have the tools to know how to do that. And by very playful, interactive experiences, they can begin to move in ways that they don't even realize they're doing. So the movement and the expression is um, coming out. And then also having them work with one another. I think there's ways for them to express themselves individually and then through partners and groups and that how working together can really make sometimes something even greater than one can do on them themselves. So there's the benefits of having that spark ignited. Clearly the physical benefits are tremendous. Um, so I think, you know, you the dedication, the discipline, all of those ancillary things that you learn and achieve just by doing um, and the example of the instructor, instructors um, as paramount, I think, really in, in a lifelong learning lesson of what the arts can do mm -hmm. for a person. And a lot of people, and you, I know you talked about discipline and so forth, but certainly a lot of um, parents will get their children involved in dance programs and after school programs just sort of as something to do, but it really can have an, a lifelong impact uh, on a child's life, right, Cynthia? Yes, I think the best example is Andrew. Um, Andrew actually is uh, studying acting at University of North Carolina School of the Arts. He is, um, I met him because I teach there in the drama program. I teach movement there and I was very impressed with not only his ability to understand and uh, do technical choreography in dance, but also with his um, his ability to really um, understand what the arts in general can do. Um, Andrew, I, I know that uh, you, you chose acting, but um, tell me kind of what it was like for you to arrive at the school and to change into the acting field. Was that something that 
because you, you actually were at the um, School of the Arts LaGuardia. Yes, I was. Right, which reminded our audience what they may re uh, recognize that from the, the movie Fame. Fame. Right? Fame originated there. Um, I studied acting at LaGuardia as well, um, took a really big interest into dance again. I found out that actors actually dance. So it came back into my life once again from leaving it from third grade. And I just fell back in love with it. And I used it as something to fuel my acting and my personal being and just build me as a person. I feel that without dance, I wouldn't have been where I am now. I wouldn't have gotten to where I am now. Um, honestly, dance has become the second part of me. And I feel that without dance, there would have they wouldn't have been an Andrew Manning at the University of North Carolina. Um, well, let me ask you this. Um, as a young man who loves dance and got trained, did you do some ballet training as well? I did a little ballet training, <clears throat> yeah. How, have you caught any kind of um, bullying or flack for participating in dance? And if so, <laughs> how did you deal with that? Oh, wow. Yes, I have, actually. <laughs> um, that was the first, that was the main reason why I stopped dancing, to be quite honest. Um, I stopped because I was afraid of people calling me names. I was afraid of being called something that I wasn't, and I didn't want to be going, I didn't want to go through that on my own. Um, I told my mom about it, and she explained to me, like any mother would, that you can do whatever you love to do. If that's what you want to do, you can do it. I took her advice and I, I ran with it. She didn't force me to do anything I didn't want to do at the time, but it just so happened that I stopped dancing and discovered acting and it fell back into my lap, so. Now, how old were you when you and your mother had that conversation? I was in the third grade, so I was about seven years old. Well, kudos to your mother for, <laughs> for just encouraging you in uh, the direction of your own personal passion but uh, you've uh, evidently developed qu quite a maturity about responding to that. How would you advise um, parents out there or, or any young people or even adults who are watching, um, particularly who are male, who would be interested in pursuing dance? I would honestly say do it. Go for it. There's nothing wrong with dancing. Dancing is something that opens you up as a person emotionally, spiritually, physically. It allows you to explore your imagination and your creative side. Even if you don't want to become a dancer or you don't want to become something in the arts, but I feel that dance honestly fuels any goals and any ambitions that you want in life. No matter if you want to become a chef, a fashion designer, or any other thing that's in, in the occupation in the world, dance honestly opens up your mind to a whole nother world that you, I honestly feel you wouldn't experience in any day life. Cynthia, let me ask you, um, we've talked a little bit about Walltown, but talk, tell us what your um, career has been like, how dance entered your life. Sure. Um, <clears throat> at a very young age, I knew that I wanted to dance, but there wasn't a dance studio in my hometown. I'm actually from Mount Airy, North Carolina. Ah. And um, I was fortunate enough to have a program come to the um, beautiful city of, of Mount Airy, uh, probably similar to what Gaspar is doing, where I, I was introduced to it, and um, I fell in love. And my first performance <laughs> um, was um, the first pr uh, performing arts group that I saw was Jose Limon. And um, I knew when I saw them that that was what I wanted to do. And so um, I did audition for North Carolina School of the Arts and trained there. Um, and when I was 16 and a half, very young,